Hi hobby friends, let's talk about the new Autark. They're here, new plastic Eldar in all their glory. I mentioned it when the leaks started coming through at the end of last year, but Craftworld Eldar are my absolute, uncontested and eternal favourite faction in the 40k universe. Lore, look, playstyle, there is nothing I don't love about the space elves. So you can imagine how thrilled I was to get my hands on this new plastic Autark, and how excited I was to apply some of the techniques and ideas from underpainting to his glorious form. The main thrust of this painting project is, do not fear colour. My Eldar force is Ulthwe, who, having circled the Eye of Terror for an eon or two, have taken on a colour scheme that's maybe a little dour compared to the other more variegated Assyriani. But even a muted colour scheme deserves all the depth and richness of a full spectrum paint job, so let's see what we can do. To start off on the right foot, and in the right part of the spectrum, I've been base coating this chap in burgundy. This should give a good foundation for just about all the colours we'll be working with here. After that, I switch gears to a Prussian blue undershade. Immediately, we're setting up some serious chromatic and temperature contrast here. Often I'll save this sort of nadir low light for a later stage, but I'm working conservatively here. I want richness, but he still has to look Ulfway when he's done, so I'm giving myself the opportunity to fix this with all the following steps. When you're working with a tool like the airbrush or equivalent dry brush techniques, it can be helpful to think about your steps like this. Shadows done, it's time to move on to a mid-tone of sorts. Keeping true to my chromatic watchword, I'm not reaching for a neutral bone colour yet, but rather this fairly saturated orange that the Molotow company likes to call lobster for some reason. The application here is slightly looser than the shadows, but note that it's still very controlled. We're modelling light and shadow here, trying to draw the shapes out of the tiny model. Stay really gentle on the trigger and work slowly. Lots of thin, controlled coats, not a flabby zenithal. Okay, still not at bone yet, my next colour is this yellow pastel shade. Note though, in contrast with everything else, we're already looking fairly bone coloured. Colours work in unison, and our brains do all sorts of adjustments in the background. As you develop your painter's eye, you should be looking out for these sorts of effects. I fancy doing a video on this sort of painting adjacent skill building, so if you'd be interested in that, let me know in the comments. After yellow, I do one more highlight with a natural, warmer white. This isn't the ubiquitous titanium white because that tends towards a bluer, cool feeling. I'll note here that I regret not thinning this though. White paints, even ones that are thin enough to go straight into an airbrush, are frequently the most speckly, and this one was no different. I'm actually not adverse to a little airbrush texture, and it looks a lot more prominent in the photos than it does in real life, but I have to make my excuses here because I'm sure someone will want to mention it. Don't forget that what we're doing here is a lighting sketch, so that means even the bits that aren't targeted for the bone colour are getting these highlights, namely the weapon glow, the spear tip, and the cloth. Time to tie this work together now. My brush is loaded with a thinned mix of raw sienna ink and I'm spraying this over as a sort of mid-tone filter. This step really pulls together the colours used so far, and despite the weird greeny shade the camera makes of it, it'll also get us back towards a raw wraithbone kind of a tone. I need to start getting a sense of the major colour blocks now, so still with the airbrush, I lay in first the blue of the spear, then the red of the cloth, and finally violet for the spinner. It can be a little daunting doing more detailed work like this with the airbrush, but it's well worth building the skill, if only for the gains in efficiency. Okay, let's see where we're up to. Still looking pretty crazy colourful, but considering this is about an hour of painting, and we have all of our major light and colour information blocked in, I'm feeling pretty good. There's just one more colour to really complete the scheme, the obligatory Ulthwe Black. I neglected to mention, but this chap is actually going to be what I call the reverse Ulthwe. 
that is to say mostly bone with a few black bits, rather than the usual mostly black with a little bit of bone. This simple scheme inversion is a good way to make your HQs really pop on the table. Leather next. As with the black I want to retain my lighting information, so both this leather and the black were painted with contrast style paints. While I'm not convinced contrast paints are the best option for beginner painters, which seems to be the marketing for them, working with transparency like this is a really great speed hack if you have some basic skills in place already. Bronze metallics are the last of the main colour blocks to go in, and from here on out it's all about detailing. Out comes the wet palette, and on goes eyes, gems, edge highlights, and all the rest of it. I'm still only a few hours in at this point, and with each of these final steps the model really starts coming to life. Even just edge highlights add so much information, and with careful modulation of tones, they can really guide your eye around the miniature and make a huge difference in how you perceive the colours. With a final simple dry brush and stipple on his base, the afternoon autark is all done. Probably about five hours of very, very relaxed painting, but with no losses in complexity and dynamism. The interaction of those initial red, blue and yellow layers leave the model with all these lovely greenish, bluish and reddish browns without losing that characteristic Ulthway bone colour. Keen-eyed viewers might spot some rather unsightly watermarks. All I'd say is, if you're setting your basing material with isopropyl alcohol, just make sure you're fully in control of your pipette, or you may end an otherwise lovely painting session with a little bit of disappointment. We'll call it battle damage and move on with our lives, I think. I hope this sort of model-based, rather than technique-oriented, video is interesting to you guys. Of course, I'm going to paint every other model from the Eldritch Omens box, so if you'd like, I'll make sure I leave the camera on for all those too. As always, let me know what you think in the comments, and I'll see you next time. Cheers!